Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to go over the network modules of Pernet. This is something I should have made a video on long ago. It's something that at least currently I think is pretty unique to Pernet, and it's extremely useful in terms of sort of scalability and maintainability. I recently made a video on making scalable and maintainable uh, network code, and this is really no exception to using something like this as well. So if you're not familiar already with using sort of just classes, not monobehavior classes, but non-monobehavior classes, uh, I'd really recommend just generally looking into that. You would be able to make generally uh, a lot cleaner code because you can avoid rewriting the same code over and over again. So let me just make a first, a very, very quick example. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to be able to network that we can equip items from our inventory. Now I've already gone ahead in our inventory and just made a little override that's called equip. And all that really happens there is that that is just called from the inventory tile whenever that I hold down left control. This is using the inventory example that I already have a three part series on where we have sort of custom tile data. As you can see, these are uh, these are actually the same object, but they are they have their own custom data that's being serialized over the network, which is very easy to expand on. It's a it's a it's what I think at least is a very very good uh, inventory system. Something that I can recommend that you might look into if you want to make a networked inventory system because it's very expandable, very maintainable, um, and you can do a lot with it. You can essentially network any kind of custom data in this. So I'm going to be using this as a base, and now let's set up. Uh, let's just call it equip item sync, for example. Because how you would normally probably go about networking something like this would be you might go and make, let's say, a private sync var of the type, let's take the inventory item, for example, and this would be the equipped item, right? This, this might be a very normal way for you to go about it. Something like this, you set up a sync var, it can even be owner auth true, just so the owner can handle it. And then wherever that you want to equip it, so if we override our equip here that I already made, might do something like this, right? Where we should dot value equals to the inventory item here. This might be a normal way that you want to go about it. And then you, you know, you can subscribe to the unchanged event and so on to react to when things are equipped. And this isn't inherently bad. This is essentially what the sync bars already do. And actually the sync types of Pernet is a great example of using network modules. As you can see, there's a lot of code in here that's already handled for you, about 260 lines of code. And this is just fully reusable network code that isn't a component. And this is pretty much what the network module is all about. But of course, you can also create your own network modules. With Pernet, we kind of have, have this no cheating mentality. So we don't want to write code that you can't easily write yourself, right? And I think this is really what keeps Pernet such a user-friendly option on the market. And so that's what I want to do. So with the equipped item sync, we can do something similar and achieve something similar to what the sync was doing in this case, but allowing us to expand on it much better. So let's say that you wanted to handle custom stuff with custom data, custom handling, whatever, you'd essentially want to make your own version of the sync bar. And that's, so that's pretty much what we'll be doing, one that works for our inventory item case here more specifically. So of course you can work fully with generics as well, so we can make it a generic of type T and we can define that T, or sorry, what well, we can say where, where T is of type, uh, you know, inventory item or whatever that we want to do. But I don't want to go that route because we already know that inventory item is what we want to handle. Um, and so let's change this. So let's go away from the same bar and let's try and make our own. So first of all, let's inherit it from network module. And that's basically it. Now you have full access to anything networked. So let's make a private inventory item. And this will just be our item. And let's make a public inventory item. That will be our item like so, where we want a custom getter and a custom setter. If you're not familiar with custom getters and setters, it's really just allowing you to run functionality whenever you're getting an, getting the item or setting the item. It's very useful in C-sharp being able to do this. So when you want to get it, we just return the underscore item and this will essentially be what we want to sync. Now, another thing that's really good to know about the network modules is you can actually nest them. So we could just make this a sync var. That's owner auth by default if we wanted to, or we can also just handle it ourselves. I think in this case, let's just handle it ourselves because it's pretty easy to do anyway. We don't need the full sync bar functionality because it does more for us behind the scenes. Not that that's bad. Sync bars aren't heavy by any means, but let's just make it easily ourselves. So whenever that we set it, we first of all just want to check if we are not the owner, let's go back and let's scream at you. So let's do a debug.log error. Only the owner can set equipped item. Something like that. And we can refer to our parent in here. The parent will be whoever initializes it or serializes it. 
So in this case, the parent here, if we have the player inventory, we can go here, we can do equip item sync, and we don't need this anymore now. Um, and essentially now the player inventory in this case is the parent. And also here, let's just do dot item, and that's pretty much it. Now we just convert it away from a sync var. And let's actually do the functionality now. So let's make a first of all, let's just make a public action that will be of time that will have inventory item of the old item and inventory item of the new item. And this will just be on item change, for example. Um, and let's make a public void. No, not public, sorry. Let's make a private void. And let's just call this one change item. This will take inventory item of the old item and the new item. Something like this. And we can say if we are the owner, if it's owner, we want to sync that. So let's do a sync items where we give it the old item, we give it the new item. And then we can also call the event, right? So we can take the on, on change event here, just do invoke, old item, new item. And this change item can now be called from in here, where we want to store the items. Let's do underscore item equals to the new value. We also want to store the old item. Do var old item equals to the item before we set it. And then here we can send the old item and we can send the item. And that's basically it. And now let's just make the private void sync item, which takes inventory item, old item, inventory item, new item, like so. And this will be an up service, obviously, because I'm running on the unsafe rules, allowing clients to fully sync it. If you want to, you can, of course, go through the server RPC route. It's not bad or wrong by any means. But in my case, I can just take the the shortcut here so we can do buffer last true and then we can actually also exclude the sender to true so that way we don't send this information to ourselves right because we already said it we immediately call the event um, and then here we can essentially just run the same logic as we have up here inside the sync item so we already have the old item and the new item will just be an item like that uh, and that should really be it so let me just take you through the logic right so when we set item it'll first of all check if we are the, if we are the owner if we're not we stop here if we are the owner we immediately set the items as we should. We call the change item. Or oh, maybe actually, hold on. I think item changed is more clear. So we essentially call the item change with old item and new item. And this will immediately for ourselves locally, just call the event as well. And if we also are the owner, it'll also sync the item because, you know, the item has been changed. So we know that we want to sync it. And so that goes into sync item, where we now set the item. We call the item changed again. This time we're not the owner, so it doesn't sync, but it still calls the event for us as well. And that's basically it. In about 40 lines of code, we now have fully reusable networked code that'll buffer correctly. Um, so let's just quickly subscribe to that event. So let's do equipped item dot on item change. Let's just do equipped item change. Let's do on disable. Same thing here minus there we go and then let's just take that and let's do debug.log let's do old item and this is old item and this is new item old item is old item and the new item is the new item and we can just feed the inventory here Cool. And that should basically it. Now we are fully able to sync items. And the reason why we did this, obviously right now we're sort of just mimicking a light version of the sync var functionality. But again, now you have full control to do pretty much as much as you want with it, right? You can make many custom events for when items are dropped, items are equipped, maybe items are used, right? When you choose to use the item and swing the item and so on. And you can essentially network anything that you want in here and work fully through callbacks. And you might also ask, why do I even want this? Why didn't we just write the code into player inventory? And the reason why we didn't do that is let's say that you have, let's say 10 different kinds of inventories. Let's say that you have, um, you know, you have the shared inventory, you have the player inventory, you have an enemy inventory, you have an NPC inventory, you have animal inventories, whatever, many kinds of inventories. And some of them you might want to have the ability to equip items and some shouldn't. Right, so therefore we don't want to write it into the base inventory because then everybody would be able to equip stuff and we don't need that. 
So it's really just a good way to any inventory now that you want to be able to equip items, you can just plop this type in here. And even for that sake, non inventories too. Everything can now use this equipped item. In our case, it just makes more sense for it to be inside inventory. Now, I'm aware for this case, some of you might think, well, couldn't we just have abstracted out another layer that's called an equipment inventory? And you'd be right, we could do that sort of abstract beyond the inventory layer. But it's really just to show you that now we've made something that can go anywhere. It doesn't just go in the inventory types. This can, anything can essentially now equip. You can have a door, have an equipped item, which could be a doorknob if you, for some reason, wanted that structure, right? Um, and you could do it as much as you want. So let's just go test it and let's just confirm that this actually works how it should. So now when I press play, you should be able to see on my player here as well, um, oh, and also, actually, I just realized we're not serializing it. Let's do that very quickly. Serialize field. And let's also go into our equip item sync and just serialize this one here as well. Serialize field. Do I forgot to tell it to serialize the class. You need to do system.serializable. So now when we hit play, we go here. You can see we have the equipped item with the item. And you can see exactly here what it is now. So you can see this is our item with the item preset, quantity, what custom data it holds, and so on. So now if I pick up this blue disc, I hold control and I click it. Now you can see we've got this custom item as quantity of one. You, we can see all the custom data that it holds. And you can see that we successfully identified that we equipped it. Oh no, sorry, I haven't done anything wrong. It's just because it's a struct, right? So it's not actually null. What we could do if you really wanted it to, since it's a struct, you could make it nullable like this, which allows it to actually be null. Uh, this is just because it's a struct. If these were classes, you wouldn't have to make them nullable. Let's say it was network identity issue we're passing around. They don't have to be nullable. Uh, it is just purely because we're working with structs here. So now when I pick this up and I equip it, and there we go. Now the bad side of this is now we actually can't see them in editor. So just be aware of that. So I am going to switch back again for, to non-nullable. Um, but it's really just to show you that you can make them be null as well. When it's structs nullable, things can be networked just fine as well. There's nothing wrong with it. But I do want to be able to see an editor the stuff that I do. Right, so now you can see we've equipped this and we have the callback. Now let's get this guy over here and let's press play. And now you can see he immediately got a callback as well from the first player here because he has equipped something. And as you can see, he also has all the custom data. Everything has now been networked successfully. Same if I, he goes to pick up a piece of wood, for example. You can see now that has also been networked. They both got the event. If we go in here. You can see this is the wood item preset. And in here, wood item preset. So you can see now we have a very clean way to be able to network whenever inventory items essentially change. We could probably make actually the logs just a little bit cleaner if we just go here and we just uh, log out the preset instead. That way it can easily tell us when it's null. So there you go. Now you can see we went from no old item to now the custom item. You can now go to the wood. So now you can see the old item was the custom item, new item was the wood. This guy can pick these up. And yeah, as you can see now, this all works. So yeah, that should really be about it and should be pretty clean. Uh, and yeah, you can see we have all the custom data necessary and so on. And they, they change correctly, they sync correctly. And yeah, you can do whatever with it you want now. You can handle also unequipping and so on. So it's really just a, a quick and easy way to, to show you how to work with network modules, essentially just allowing you to network code completely without uh, needing any components on Unity components or whatever. Um, the only thing that's very important to know is when you do set these up, have it be before the network loop, right? So if you don't want new here, that's fine. You can also do it in, in awake, for example. You can also do equipped item equals to new. This way you can do it with item context. This is completely valid as well. They do just have to be initialized before the network starts. That's sort of the more important part of it. And, but in this case, since we don't hold any initial data we can just have it be new here and that should be fine so i hope you enjoyed the video hope you learned something new and i hope you find this useful find some good use cases for it and other than that i just hope that you have a wonderful day